has a really fascinating um, mm. bit of um, psychology uh, coming from the neuroscience, where there's like a loop of how the brain basically works with the world. It takes in information, it, it processes it for salience to work out what it needs to care about. So it actually discards most of the information coming in. That's why you get tired at the end of a busy day where you've done lots of different things because your brain's actually too, using huge amounts of energy to throw information away. Mm. When you decide on the information you want to pick, you work out like a mental model of what that means. Then you come up with a, a, a theory of action and then you kind of um, execute that and then you see what the result is. So there's this loop. And, and this is all like spontaneous and it happens among different organelles in the brain. So you can kind of see it shoot around in the brain and do its thing. If you give people computer games, teenagers with computer games, they do the first half of the process and then they just shortcut because computer games are gameable. Like you can literally learn this trigger response to that behavior. And good computer game, you know, good gamers, that's what they do. They see the in input and they just act the thumb press motion that executes that particular action that kills that baddie. They don't have to come up with complex mental models. They only have to work out what the rules of that game are. And any game is super simple in comparison to the complexity of the real world. So yeah. these kids are not learning how to do chaos worlds. And they're going to, you know, literally like the people on checkouts at the supermarket and going, this is too complex. Because human interactions, human to human relationships are beyond complicated, which is why people with autism struggle with them because cerebellums going back to that do most of our social it doesn't processing. automate for them so it automates differently so people with autism there seems to be a clear difference in things like the Purkinje cells in the cerebellum and I'm, I'm just name dropping that word to do like this i know what i'm talking about this stuff and i actually could do with being a bit more precise on what this is but there are structural differences that are perceivable and this is very fresh this is like 10 years old research only yeah so we know, so given, all right, this is the way I see this. Given that the cerebellum does most of our social processing and we see differences in behavior there for autism, and then we go back to my little theory about how, or the theory, um, how the basic ganglion cerebellum kind of automates stuff for the rest of the brain. And when that doesn't work, the rest mm -hmm. of the brain has to do it manually in a slow way, right? People with autism often experience social situations in overwhelm because they don't know what the manual is they don't know what the right response is yeah. and they have to work it out in real time which is slow and draining yes. the manual is the cerebellum that most teenagers neurotypical teenagers teach during teenage years mm -hmm. and just encode patterns so the manual is they just literally watched other people and went i'll do what they did and they copy and the cerebellum copies those patterns and goes oh that's good enough because good enough is good enough for the cerebellum yeah whereas someone with autism whose cerebellum does not function like that can't train the cerebellum to do that because the cerebellum there is doing other stuff looking at other types of pattern it's just missing the social then they're you know mid-20s and early 30s in a pub and something happens and they are trying to process in real time using the slow cpu of the neocortex going ah I don't know what to respond because I can see like 20 different layers of interaction happening here. Body language is telling me this. They said that. Their tone of voice said this, but they used that word. And that word means like one of these three things. And they perceive all of this simultaneously and end up with a list of things. Like I could respond from any of these and I have no bias to picking one. If the cerebellum was working neurotypically, it would just take those 20 inputs and go, oh, in this case, we go with that one. Mm -hmm. Bang, do that one. It, yeah. it doesn't think it through. It just goes, oh, this complex, chaotic mess of input, my job is to crunch that down and give a single answer. That's the cerebellum's job. If it's not doing that, you end up with the input going, how do I decide? And that's the experience of autism for a lot of people. So I think that's a really compelling sort of neuroscientific narrative of maybe what's going on for people.